So next we're going to look at polar graphs. Now in order to understand polar graphs, we need to actually take a step back and look at rectangular graphs. So it used to be the case that we would have something like y equals f of x. And so for example, we'll look at y equals x squared. And if we wanted to graph this, the way that we did it way back at the beginning was we told you to pick some x values, plug it into the formula and calculate the corresponding y values, and then take these points and plot them individually on a graph. So negative two, four, somewhere up here, negative one, one, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and then use that to get the shape of the graph by connecting it through connecting all those different points together. And this was graphing by plotting points. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this idea, but we're going to extend it instead of looking at rectangular graphs, <coughs> we're going to look at things like r is equal to f of theta. So theta will be our input value and r will be the output value. And this will give us a different type of graph. And we're going to see how to convert this graph in a moment. We'll do an example in a moment. But the basic idea is that we're going to start off by graphing this as if we were doing it in rectangular coordinates. So here's our r, here's our, here's our r, and here's our theta. And then we're going to take these points and then turn that into something that is in polar coordinates. Now, one of the big mistakes students make with this is that they try to go too fast. They try to skip too many steps, and it doesn't make any sense to them because they're not doing all the work. And so my encouragement for you for this, for this section is to make sure you don't rush through it. Take your time, go through all the steps, and see how it all comes together. And then, you know, if I would say that if you're going on uh, into future classes, you can then train yourself to do this uh, mentally where you can start to skip steps. But for this class, really, I want to see all the steps, because if I see all the steps, I know that you're thinking about things correctly. Um, some of you have graphing calculators that will graph these things for you. That's fine to check your work, but I really want you to understand the graphing process and not just copy what your calculator tells you. And so we'll look at a couple examples of how this works, uh, some explicit examples of how this works. Sketch a graph of the polar equation r equals theta. So our equation r equals theta, what are we going to do with this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to think of values of theta and then get values of r. Now, traditionally, we just sort of think of values between 0 and 2 pi. Sometimes we need more points. Sometimes we, need, uh, we don't need as many points. It's not always immediately clear. For something like this, I think we can go 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. What are the corresponding r values? Well, r is just equal to theta, so we can graph that. And if we plot this on a graph, let's say this is pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, what we're going to end up getting is a line that looks like this. So pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. So this is, the, this is the easy part. This is the first part. It's just getting this graph. So the question is, how do we turn this into something in polar coordinates? So I'm going to graph down here. Uh, let's see. So all these circles are supposed to be getting bigger by the same amount each time. Of course, sketching these by hand is difficult. If you wanted to go on the internet, you could actually print up polar graph paper. It'll make your life a little bit easier. Okay, so what's going on? Well, this gives us five distinct points to plot. And so here's our zero, here's our pi over two, here's pi, Here's 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi will be back here again. And for our purposes here, we'll make these circles radius pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Depending on the problem, we may want to make this 1, 2, 3, 4. We may even want to use like 1 half, 1, 
one and a half, two, and so forth. We just have to pick it based on the problem. So what points do we get? Well, we get the point zero, zero. We get the point pi over two comma pi over two. So our R value, we're on the circle of radius pi over two at the angle of pi over two. So that's this. The next one, circle of radius pi on the circle pi. So circle of radius pi is this, angle pi is off here to the left, and so on. We can trace this all the way around. And you can immediately start to see what's happening. You see that as we go out, the radius is getting bigger, and you can almost start to visualize that spiral. Now, the mistake students make, which is not, it's an understandable mistake, is that you try to connect the dots too directly. You try to go straight up over here, straight down over here. Um, that's a very rough approximation, but it's not actually that helpful in terms of actually visualizing the shape. Uh, when you look, end up working on more complicated problems, you'll see this happening. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, between 0, 0 and 0 pi over 2, between here, I'm actually going to put a few sort of construction lines. Now, if you look at the graph, the graph starts at 0 and it increases to pi over 2. So what we're going to do is on these different lines here, I'm going to draw points that are slowly working their way out and increasing the radius to pi over 2. From pi over 2 to pi, we can do the same thing. So I'll just use 2. So here is our, uh, let's do, yeah, that's fine. So here's our angle here at pi over 2. We want to stretch out to pi. So this circle is radius pi over 2. This was radius pi. So my radius is going to slowly increase outward to that. And this gives us an actually a more accurate shape for the sketch. And then once you've done a few of these, you could actually, by about this point, start to recognize the pattern. And you can start to see that shape work itself out. Um, one of the big keys about this one is always just making sure that you're not drawing straight line from here straight up along there, uh, straight up along those lines, because that's not how it works. Because remember that the angle is changing this way by a little bit. And so as the angle is changing, the radius is slowly working its way out. And so it's getting pulled in that way instead. Um, this takes practice. It takes time. And after you do, after you have another, you know, like three examples of this, it'll start to make a little more sense. But again, the overall picture, you want to start over here, make a little chart of value, sketch this, uh, sketch the graph in the X sort of as a rectangular graph, and then use those points to help you see what's happening going over two polar coordinates. Sketch a graph of the polar equation R equals 4 cosine theta and find an interval on which it completes one cycle. So this problem has a lot more going on to it. So let's first of all start off by looking at our equation. R equals 4 cosine theta. Now the value of theta that we're going to use for this problem is going to be the same values that we use for uh, graphing when we had to use the key values. So in this case, there's not a lot of transformation. We're only multiplying by 4. So we can actually do this one mentally. So the cosine function, remember the first key value for cosine is 1, but since we're multiplying by 4, that turns into a 4, and it goes down and comes back up again. And so the graph of this starts up here at 4, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, a little bit tight on that side, that's okay, down to negative 4, and then back up to 4. So this is our starting point for this graph. So now what we have to do is we have to take this thing and we have to convert it into polar coordinates. So here's 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So let's see what happens. When theta is equal to 0, r is equal to 4. So we're going to have a radius of 4 on the theta equals 0 line, which is going to be out here. And then at pi over 2, going straight up and down, we'll have a radius of 0. And then at pi, when we're pointing to the left, the radius will be negative 4. So that's going to be here again. And then when uh, theta goes out to 3 pi over 2, it'll go back down to 0 again. 
And then for the last part, going back out to two pi, it's going to go, go, go back out again. Now, again, this is where students find themselves, get themselves into trouble. They draw these two points and they just go back and forth directly between them. That's not how this is going to work. So what would we have to do? So between zero and pi over two, I'm going to draw three sort of construction lines. One, two, three. The idea here, let's sketch this in a different color. We have a circle of radius four. And the radius, as we keep increasing this angle, the radius is going to keep decreasing all the way down till it gets to zero when it's going straight up and down. So if this is four, so this radius is four, so then it's a little bit shorter than four, then it's a little bit shorter than four, then it's a little bit shorter than four. Between pi over two and pi, Let's draw three more. One, two, three. Now the problem here is that our R values between pi over two and pi are going to go negative. And so I'm going to extend each of these lines into the negative space. And the radius is going to go from zero down to negative four. Well, what's the radius negative four? Well, it's just the continuation of this circle. So zero, four is up here. Zero, negative four is down here. And I can sketch out this circle again. And the idea is that we're going to now increase starting from zero. And then as we go on these lines, we get longer and longer and longer until we have a four over here. So a little bit longer, a little bit longer, a little bit longer, four. And by doing this, we now can connect these dots. And we see that we get a round shape. Now, in fact, this turns out to be a circle. Uh, but you can't really see that from here, and that's okay. Right now, I'm just focusing on the process. Uh, if we'd done this on um, an actual polar grid and with uh, enough points in between these, we could actually chart this out to make this uh, actually look like a circle. But for this level, this is good enough. The interesting here thing here is that we ended up at the same point we started at. And that's what it means about completing one cycle. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the graph starting from pi and going to 2 pi just to show you what happens. So at pi, we have an angle of, or sorry, we have a, the radius is negative 4. And so between pi and 3 pi over 2, we have something like this. But the values here are still below the y-axis, and so it's still negative, and so it's starting here, and it's getting shorter and shorter and shorter down to 0. Shorter and shorter and shorter down to 0. For the last part, it starts at zero, and now we're over on this part between three pi over two and two pi, and the radius is starting at zero, it's increasing out to four. So increasing, 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 four. And so this is the whole shape that we have. And so the interval zero comma pi gives one cycle. Now, depending on the formula, sometimes you have to go all the way around from zero to two pi, sometimes you don't. Uh, it's very much working with the information you have. Don't try to memorize a bunch of formulas. Just look at the information you have and work with it.